And uh, Richard uh, Can you speak up proposed that we should think of this the, uh, project to do an objective exhibit. And I want to be very careful here because I've gotten into trouble making that claim. The very fact that we are talking about doing an exhibit about the Manhattan Project is a non-objective decision. Indeed. We have decided this is important. We could have done something on the Hoover Dam. We could have done something <laughs> on the soft polio vaccine. We could have done something on um, the gas chambers uh, in Germany. We could have done a lot of things. So, so we're already we're making a decision based on our feeling informed by a lot of objective data, uh, but we're choosing to exhibit on a topic. We are going to have to choose to do certain aspects of the topic, because we can't do it all. Uh, and these will not really be objective decisions. They will be decisions based on a consensus, on argument, on persuasion, to some extent on budget and size and time. Um, but you, you you put yourself in grave danger when you claim pure objectivity because people who don't like what you've done will be very easily easy for them to show that you cannot mathematically prove that the content exists. Okay. <laughs> the way I have tried to work around this in exhibits in the past, the most controversial one I ever did was a quite early exhibit called um, What About AIDS? <laughs> and, and I had members of my own staff resign because we were going to talk about anal sex uh, in an exhibit in a science center. Uh, and I won't tell you all the horror stories. In the end, the consortium it took eight museums working together so we could divvy up the blame. Um, it was, I think, a marvelously successful exhibit. Uh, we actually, there was an editorial newspaper that, that said this exhibit has saved thousands of lives, but we took a risk. How did, how did we um, spread it around? We said we're going to tell a story. <laughs> how did you spread it around? No pun intended. <laughs> how did it go viral? Spread around the risk. <laughs> uh, spread around the risk of doing an exhibit on a topic. First place, I said, we've got a story here. We are going to tell a piece of the whole story. We're going to talk about the human immune system. We're going to talk about what attacks the human immune system. We're going to talk about vectors of transmission of things that attack the human immune system. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the ways which do and do not work to stop the vector of transmission. Um, I think, though, that's the, that's the only, um, in the long run, practical way to do this. So we're going to tell a story. We've chosen to tell a story about the bomb. And now there are several different versions of the story. One can be these people got together uh, in the midst of war to do something to help their side. Here were the reasons they did it. Here's what fed into it. Their fears of, their dreams of, their convenience, their desire for glory, whatever the reasons we want to give. And then we could talk about when they were done what happened? What were some of the both intended and unascended side effects? So you can sort of see the Manhattan Project story in the middle with things feeding into it and things going out of it. Yeah. That's a scenario around which That's you can That's what build. I mean by objective. So, That's historian subjective. So there's, a, there's, two elements, there, there's two elements of that that I find very interesting. And, and you, you, I, don't, I don't know if I could draw this because I don't know the, the history well enough. But in the same fashion that you talk about Oppenheimer going out and getting individuals and bringing them in. There's a physical notion of that. You can almost have an exhibit around bringing in people in the same way that you're bringing in perspectives. Mm -hmm. What did I go out and get you for? What did I go out? What perspective was I bringing into this? To this, um, you know. And then, and then, what, you know, what happened to those who came in, and what happened to the perspectives that that came in? You can have a kind of an in and out flow sort of yeah. thing. I want to make uh, only one caveat relative to the example that you gave. If I'm walking into a museum, and I see an exhibit that says, what about AIDS? I have no idea that you're going to talk about vectors. I have no idea that you're going to talk about transmissions. I mean, OK, 
Okay, I'll go over it to it because it's a topic. I know about it. It's relevant. It's in today's world. Will I do the same thing with it, with something that says Manhattan Project? Okay, so so we we got to get them got to get them moving walking in that direction. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and the what about AIDS was enough to get them walking. Then once you got them there, you could cut. You know, mm-hmm. you, your vectors could be, <laughs> could be a variety of different right. forms. Yeah. But 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 but, but the Manhattan Project. Project is is not going to get them there. So yeah, and that's yeah. funny. I would have thought it would. No. That's, the name is so. You famous. and I no, might, no. but uh, yeah. so, so this we need some front end evaluation here. Maybe something. Maybe ask some question. Uh, riffing off of Alan's, you know, what what is AIDS? But like, why was the bomb built? Why was the bomb developed? You know, or or why the bomb? Or maybe why the bomb? You know, something very. The birth yeah, of the bomb. The birth of the bomb. Yeah, something like the bomb. And like, oh, you know, people know what you're talking about. Birth and life. You look at the health thing and just go fat man little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Oppenheimer Groves. No, yeah, 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 it's an obesity <laughs> exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, talk about how many chocolate bars Groves <laughs> ate every day. <laughs> Seriously amazing. <laughs> but something that gives, you know, it has to give that. The bomb has to be in the title, I think. Like that. Or, or I, I have no idea what the, the title bomb. is. Well, yeah. Making it sound like <laughs> No, <laughs> that's a nice point, right? Yeah, of course. You, the bomb. Would you have dropped the bomb? Right, yeah. yeah. So what what is the meaning of the now? word the bomb? Word so the, 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 the word the bomb say no. the yeah, end of World War II? Yeah, that's a nuclear bomb. Only for our age. Yeah, that's, I'm kind of mad. It's really cool. It's the bomb. The A. Well, what about the A bomb or the atomic bomb? Yeah, I think so. That would have Term of approval. Yeah. Right? Term of approval yeah. But they, what they will say is, "Wow, this exhibit is the bomb," oh, and they'll all think exactly. it would be very original. Yeah, they will all say that again and again. I get that about like the blog also. Oh, it's yeah, really it's really it's funny. Really the time I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. So you think the bomb is not going to work? No, I, I, I'm not saying it won't work. Oh. I, I'm saying it will work, and it doesn't matter. I mean, they'll, they'll make jokes about it no matter what. But I think yeah. the social meaning of the bomb to us has a particular, invokes all kinds of associations and thoughts that doesn't, they have no meaning to people, you know, born after 1980 or yeah. something. They yeah. just don't. It, it, it will have a different meaning. I mean, they still talk, I mean, people, Iran gets the bomb. That's yeah. a statement that, yeah. that, that a high schooler will understand. Yeah. They'll know what that yeah. is about. I think North Korea and had a bomb test. Yeah. Like, we know what that yeah. means. That's yeah. true. Well, As a higher recognition than Manhattan Project. But, you know, yeah. for, the purposes, yeah. Yeah. for the purposes of this discussion, though, there's, there's a, a, a ton of marketing folks out there that are going to get us the title we need. You know, yeah. I think, I yeah, think exactly. we, you know, it's content yeah. that we need and, and yeah. design that we need yeah. to be. be we don't have on. to worry about the title. You, yeah. can, you can do that one, survey that one. But we're trying to get at the concept through the title in some ways. Right. Yeah. But I like this. People have mentioned that secret cell. I mean, maybe there's got to be some sort of secret. Secret of the bomb. Secret of the bomb. There we go. Secrets, or I don't know. I I think that, I mean, again, I, I think that there's a lot of people who, if you put this exhibit is the secret of the bomb or something. That's people are really they look excited by this, even though you can look it up on Wikipedia, right? I mean, it's it's it's, it's still a draw. Yeah. Is Once they read it on Wikipedia, there's a title. Oh, got a title. That's scary. <laughs> you know, in the wrong way. Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia, the secret. <laughs> so if you want to scale this down to, from the gigantic Hindenburg-like structure that we've, we've <laughs> assembled over the last two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aren't you really, aren't you really, <laughs> talking, about, <laughs> really talking about... Aren't you really talking about... Really, the bomb. The scientific <laughs> discoveries, the important ones that preceded it, the Manhattan Project, and then well, I think we agreed somewhere around 1950, which would be before the hydrogen bomb, or maybe we stop with the hydrogen bomb, I don't know. But I think that's another total can of worms separate from the atomic bombs yes. and the discovery of fission. So that begins to be, I mean, the Manhattan Project in the middle, the end of the Second World War, and then the beginnings of proliferation. You've you've got that's an exhibit. And, and then and then the epilogue maybe that and then, yeah, Alan then, suggested. Yeah. Then the little poster on the way out. 
I mean, is that, well, is I, think, I, think, I think we 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 have all this. If we're going to try to put this in a science center, then we've got all the science collateral that comes from this. All everything that we've yeah. talked about yeah. in the way of bi biomedical and yeah. environmental and and uh, energy. That's a whole other stand yeah. that has to be there. I agree. Right. So is but that, that doesn't have to be the, the center of the exhibit. That's one of the, as you exit, look at all this. Mm -hmm. And there ought to be another hallway that's lined with with the countries that have nuclear weapons. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing about a six-piece or seven-piece Venn diagram with, with yeah. the, the bomb in the middle, but then all of these other things that are going to give us our, our context and consequence. And really, when you when you define it this way, you find that you don't have to have a. You've got to follow this line through this exhibit. You can do the Newt Manhattan Project part, and if you get curious about how bombs work, you can go back to the physics part. If you're just walking through the the outcome part, you can think, well, where did this all start, and go back, right? So it suddenly doesn't have to be so linear. Well, well that's why I'm drawing the Venn diagram in my yeah. mind. Is I've got a center with with. Yes. Two, four, six, eight, however many there are appendages coming coming off of them, each of which though is is intimately connected with yeah. that center. Yeah. Yes, and I think there's because you're saying slightly different things. You're saying that if we're going to have bomb in the middle, we also need to understand things about people, about place, or about other kinds of things as this thing is getting is being made. Oh, and I that's see. Different. Yeah. I think that's a different conception yeah. than saying let's look at the physics and the science of it, and then the poster on the way out is what difference does it make? Mm. So I'm seeing. I, I mean, I think one of the things that been interesting about this is to think about very different ways of thinking about the bomb or making of the bomb that are not the traditional ways of thinking about it. And that includes something other than, you know, Alex's fabulous point, which is that we hear about the physicists, right, because we don't have lots of information about everybody else. We don't have as much it built in either about these people as human beings who were recruited to do something that they didn't really know what the outcome would be, but that v it immediately upon that bomb being set off, people had different ideas about what to do and how to act. I'm so trying to do a party so, so, balloon and you so, want to do a Hindenburg again. But, but, I don't want but, to do but, a wait, Hindenburg. But, I don't want to do a Hindenburg. What I'm saying is that if you're going to tell, you can put the material object in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. And if we ask the question about how does that object even come to be? Yeah. Yeah, we we can tell one story, which is a straight up, some physicists had to solve some problems, they had some engineers with them, and here they were, then they blew up the thing, okay, and then, oh my goodness, what should we do, blah, blah, medical, blah, done. But I think there's another way of conceptualizing this, which is even if you took this actual phone and said, what are the inputs to it, and yeah. it's not the Hindenburg, yeah. let's say there are five things that you wanted to say as contributing yeah. things, you could tell a story of its making that is that's different than it's just the physicist. Yes, sure. And you can tell a story that has to do with place, it has to do with other kinds yeah, of things that feed I mean, into its I mean, making. So but the so old I, story I, I doesn't, like I mean, it seems not as compelling because we've got versions of it all over. But the bond so is the so, so, so there's yeah. a, so there's there's a, a way of looking, I, I, I sort of like the, the Venn diagram aspect. Yeah. Is if, if, if the only question, you or the only issue you want to come out of this is simply, and I and I, I think this is where I where I am. That wow, the Manhattan product, uh, project was unbelievably complex, complex in its design, complex in its outcomes, complex in you know maybe that may, maybe that's all you're trying to say is the 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 the, um, uh, the 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 Manhattan project is really complex. Here's where I would do something slightly different than what you see in other exhibits. We do the same thing with the brain. We say, wow, the brain's an amazing thing. And then, so you got this thing about the brain in the center, and then you have disjointed aspects having to do with the brain going out in a lot of different, now that's not a Venn diagram. What, if, if the bomb is in the center, and one element that relates to that is the physical design, the people involved and their emotions should also overlap with that yeah. to some yeah. degree. Yeah. Absolutely. And the outcome should also overlap, so that what you're thinking is, for the person who made the decision to be part of that design, how much were they even considering what's over here about the implications of it? And how much could they have foreseen about where it's going? The interlinkages of the part that 
is connected to the center is equally important. Yeah. Yeah, and, yes. and, and they're self they're self contained. You can you can just go in and look at you know study the people or study the design or study the 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 uh, the, the medical and other uses afterwards. But you need to see that they are interconnected. Yeah. And so many of our exhibits don't do that. They just say, well, it's, it's all about that topic that's in the center. And then you wander in unrelated, disconnected ways to things that you only you only know it's connected to the center. Beyond that, you don't care right. that it's interconnected. Well, what so, what, this, what this, this, this model is also getting to me is, is a place where we can bridge science and history yeah. in ways that are going to be comfortable for, for both kinds of institutions that, that instead of having to go from science to history, we're, we're putting them together in ways that they really are. Mm -hmm. And the relationships that Bud's talking about are, are the, I think these are, the, these are the kinds of things, we've been talking about them for the last two days, and I think a lot of us have been, oh my gosh, I didn't ever think of it that way. And here we've got a chance now to, to, to do this in a, in a physical layout. So we've talked a lot about outcomes, right? I mean, in the beginning, what the outcome, I think that, the, that this was a complex project is not enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the Atomic Heritage Society, mm -hmm. yeah. and the outcome should be a sense of what this heritage is. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair statement. Just just like the race exhibit was not intended to just say, boy, race is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had a very serious person. You're absolutely right. Right, right. But the way that's constructed allows for that complexity that's in there and encourages people to see those complexities and those intertwined places of who the person was and what they brought to the project and then what that outcome was or the, the guys at Hanford that were looking at affluent early on and what they were finding and bringing all that in and allowing that to all coexist among this Venn diagram. Yeah. I like but, the idea of the Venn. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it gives the individual visitors the opportunity to do the exhibit the way it's comfortable or the way that is provocative to them, them rather than forcing them into a linear pre presentation. Yeah. Right. So, so we're able, we're able to, to not get tangled up in the chronology. The chronology will be there, but it will not be the, the operational structure of the experience. We actually allow free choice learning. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I was thinking that it might be useful to explain where I'm coming from, because it might not be entirely clear to people why I'm advocating a particular thing. I work in addition to sociology and doing historical work. Part of my world is a subfield called science and technology studies, which is a, a discipline that investigates the co-constitution of scientific, technological, and social things. And it is not the postmodernist version of things that was in the early 1990s. So, but for the people who are part of this association, which I think now has like 7,000 members around the world, the, the issue for any technological object is to see how these things come into being. Creating a new object creates new kinds of social relationships. Yeah. Yeah. For any object to be created, there have to be new social relationships that exist or are activated in some way. And so in that way, the, the question about the Venn diagram becomes especially relevant because it's not it's the overlaps in those worlds yes, that are so critical to getting a, a story told, doesn't, and not a story, sorry, but um, different parts of this to be understood in particular ways. Yeah. And again, I'm so excited about the new things here, the new things that have not been told by other exhibits in other ways. And I really think that's a huge leverage point uh, for this exhibit. It is not going to be exactly the same as everything else, yeah. where we yeah. tell yeah. just the physics or you know, just that some people worried ahead of time what would happen. But it's going to be something that tells not a complex story, but something in the middle and then whatever our five things are around it. Or those those five things are not disconnected from each other. That's right. That's right. right. That's, right. Exactly. That's, That's the point. point. Yeah, so exactly. three they inform each other. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the organization. Okay. To implosion. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it was in my exhibit design, which turned into a in the middle of this discussion, but today we are dealing with trying to get rid of these damn things.
I know not everyone is, but our president officially is working in that direction. And so in many ways is the rest of the world, like everyone except the United States and North Korea signing the, the test ban treaty, or, or in our case, uh, approving it in Congress. Uh, do we do we come round to that as part of the end of the story? I mean, it's a very important part. And even in terms of the history of technology, how do you get rid of a technology once you have it? Yeah. I mean, that was part of the original debate about the bomb. Yeah, too. I mean, so that could, was from that, the very you could, you beginning. Could fit that into the the question. Debate. So it, it's, <laughs> it connects in both directions. Something has to be there. Well, I think it's so, in there. Being very crass about it, to be mercenary, this is a very good hook for foundation money. I've discovered when you approach yeah. people like Pew Charitable Trust or Carnegie or uh, MacArthur, you name it, they're into peace. Peace initiatives. There's a lot of money for this kind of stuff. There's much right. more yeah. money, right. If so. you only had a graph like the Japanese artist's graph of nuclear tests, but in this case showing ratifications of the nuclear test ban treaty, oh, that would big really be, I mean, yeah, bing, 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 It would be a very interesting display. Uh, usually, uh, let's say, given up, but yeah. evolved, you know, replaced. Yeah. By something better. Well, and that's in fact what's happening in a way by by specific targeting rather than general targeting. That's the change that's coming. Can I ask a question. I, I'm I'm still working about two sentences behind folks there. I, there's a lot of money for this. Okay, um, for those who are giving the money, do we do you mean there's a lot of money that that would find its way toward exhibits? Because if someone sees that there's that they are willing to invest money. What platform do they see this going, what do the, the funders see this going to? Because I, I can tell you right now that, that, that as relevant as what we've described is to the Science Center community, I think if I sent out a message right now saying we're going to do a Science Center yeah, exhibition on peace, it's <coughs> creative ones will get it. They definitely will get it. But, but. And, and, and because they're naturally creative, they'll find ways to connect to it, but it won't be a natural for them in that, phrased in that way. But no, no you don't necessarily, you don't call no. it that. I know, I know you don't, uh, obviously, because then you won't get them connected. But I'm, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, it's in technology and future of nuclear weapons. And, you're, and we're saying there is a community out there that sees this as fertile ground to make an investment, and they see that it should be on platforms like... Well, we don't know about there the platform are, part, but uh, the rest is that's true. That's what I'm going to. The there are a part. lot of foundations out there at the moment, I mean, in, in, in the last three or four years, who have been putting a lot of money into disarmament stuff. There's been movies. There's been they, they, they have been funding lots of scholars at places like the Kennedy School. And, and I mean, they, they, you know, yeah, and programs they have money that they can afford to hire people who are like historians who don't actually do anything towards getting the world rid of nuclear weapons, right, <laughs> along with a lot of policy people. But like, it's actually very flush in terms of an of a area of, and I don't know if they've ever done a museum exhibit, but it's not at all beyond the scope that if you went to them and said, look, we could do this, we'd have an online component, we'd be great, a million people would all write to the president and say, ban the bomb. I mean, there's money for it. I don't think it's going to well, you know, ban the bomb. But MacArthur has been interested MacArthur. in digital and Second Life and so oh, forth. Yeah, well, we get funded for, for, for the digital yeah. for, for digital work yeah. and that sort of sort of thing. It's it, What's interesting is that um, the, the case we would want to make to them is on popularizing the issue, not necessarily studying it in greater detail, but popularizing it. And and therefore, the, the methods that we're discussing right now become really, really important, almost yeah. more than, than the message. Everybody understands that you know it's an important message, and maybe we could even study it more, and, and that could be done. But popularizing it um, is where all of the, the danger zones are. Well, even concerned. here, I think what we're talking about is, if, if I may call it objective for this sort of historical objective, the question really is, when you have a technology that has its good side and its baleful side, how do you bring the baleful side under control? This is a small-scale version of the problem of global warming, where the whole world is the technology, and it's uh, the whole human world, and it's producing this this baleful effect that we're not happy about, and we're trying to figure out how to how to deal with it. The bomb is a very similar problem on a, mm -hmm. I won't say smaller scale, but more manageable scale, perhaps. <laughs> since there are fewer bombs in the world than world-scale industry. But, 
And I so you can deal with that in the context of everything else that we've been talking about without feeling that you're just pandering to a peace foundation. But if you bring in that component, which I yeah. thoroughly think is necessary, and you can tap into the kinds of funders that would like that by and showing that's going to go into science centers, yeah. you've completed a huge equation there. I mean, science centers would be an incredible venue for this kind of exhibit. In particular because of their perceived objectivity Correct. and you know, relevance and objectivity. And the audience that's going to go there, that already goes to science centers. Yeah. We're taking it. We're taking it. You know, we, we use this number, 92 million visitors, and people say, wow, that's a lot. In fact, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the world population is not necessarily large, but what's important about it is that those are individuals who have chosen to take a portion of their day or their time or whatever to go explore science. And so you got them, you know, and that's yeah. that's a captive audience for those purposes. Yeah, yeah. It's There's a sociological article that came out a few years ago, but I, I think it has... I think this is the title of it, but it's, it's just a very provocative title. I just thought I'd put it out there. It's called, uh, part of the subtitle is The Uninvention of Nuclear Weapons. Donald McKenzie's book. Yeah, that's McKenzie's book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just mentioned, yeah. So, yeah, he's asking the question, is it possible to get rid of them? And one question he asks is, even if you got rid of the components of it, how do you get rid of knowledge? You don't. So don't. You don't. You have to keep the knowledge. My point was, Wait until climate change gets us, and then the knowledge will disappear. disappear. No. <laughs> I, I, my only reason for bringing up the title of it is I like the, I mean, half of the talk of the Manhattan Project is about invention, and so there's actually, yeah. playing with that theme is actually kind of fun. Uh, uh, the idea that you could, uh, it, it, the, the story of uninvention is also the story of the invention. So so if you take the Manhattan Project and you go in this direction, then do you need to get into what's going on now with stockpile stewardship and, and talk about those sorts of things as well as the other legacies? Oh, that's interesting. If you want funding from the lab, yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's part of disarmament. So it's part of how disarmament is going to happen. I wouldn't advocate going into a huge discussion of it. But it's part of I find this really uninteresting, though, from a museum standpoint. Yeah. Is the disarmament and that. Oh. There's really very little there that... Well, there's actually quite a lot in no, terms no, of technology. For example, we now have systems around the world that can detect 50 oh, pounds right. of high explosives underwater anywhere on Earth. So I had a room full of instruments, and I go and I read the story of this instrument. Well, I, read I mean, it. it's just, no there, the fact there. is it's as new as the uh, North Korean test of 24 hours ago and how we know that. I don't mean that it should be a large part of the display. I just think at some point at the end, you yeah, might want to talk be. about, okay, we got this thing. What are we going to do about that? And here's some of the few things people are thinking about. Right. Or, I mean, really, I'd be happy to show the testing, the testing graph it next to the next no, to the ratification graph. But at the same just time, Obama's yeah. quote from his speeches and yeah. a couple of little things yeah. on the way out. It's yeah, part there's of the plenty. Epilogue, there's plenty know, there for a small. And here, here's how it began. And here's what we want to do. No, no, not at all. No, it still has to be making the bomb. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I think everybody. But at the same time, you don't want a yucca mountain stuck in this exhibit. Yeah. What are you talking about, getting rid of the waste? No, no. You, you, mean, no. you don't want something that is two policy decisions from now is no longer... Right. No, I think you have to stay general. Yeah, yeah, very general. You know, the other thing is how much... Um, I keep coming back to the threat, public good, balance, and, you know, how much... Do you, you know, there's an old ex expression, you know, nobody wants to take their kids to, to the Science Museum on Saturday morning to hear about cancer. You know, yeah. um, and yet we do have ways of, of coming at these issues. There's a great, uh, NOAA, NOAA provides a great uh, exhibit that many of our science centers use called Science on a Sphere. And you can, you know, you can look at, at meteorological conditions around the world. I'm just picturing having exactly that same thing with your model on it. And people can come up and, and look at the globe and say, which of the, let's say I'm going to, if I blow up uh, New York, it'll be this size bomb. You know, there, the, the question is, how much of this... Do you, do you want, how threatening, how much danger, how much is danger and threat a portion of this? We know it's it inspires interest. Is is that what we're using as the angle here? Part of it, part of it. Is it? I, I mean, I, I, and I, I, mean, I guess it's the same thing with AIDS. I mean, we're using the threat as the hook. What, I don't, but with AIDS, when he did that, it was like 
yeah. public consciousness incredibly threatening. Yeah. The bomb, like we've just said, is not so much that in the public so, consciousness. So what I'm so saying is so we're trying to cultivate that. I, would, well, I, 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 think, I think Wired Magazine's national security section is called the danger room. I mean, people are attracted to titles and, yeah. and things like that. Things You've got to have a button you can push to blow things up or the kids won't come. 